They say there ain't no monster. But we need men. And just to treat you fair and square, we're paying double wages and a bonus from Frisco to Shanghai and back, all pound. All dead, you mean? Don't sign with him, mates. You can't buy off the monster with double wages and a bonus. You'll never get back to Frisco to collect your pay. I got a man here that sailed on the Golden Arrow and lived to tell about it. Come on, Billy. Tell him what you saw, Bill. It was the monster, all right. A cable's length long from beat to tail. And it came a bellering out of the night with one big eye like a lighthouse. Whoosh! We're stowed into starboard. Tell him. We're smashed to port. And then it come up amidships and broke our backs and sunk us. Forty poor sailor men drowned dead. The point is, this thing is a ship killer. And it's a miracle old Billy's alive today. Tell him about its teeth, Billy. As big as a mainsail, I swear. <coughs> and its breath, ooh, its breath was like a furnace. Oh, you got a pretty strong breath yourself, me easy talking friend. <laughs> <laughs> you mind answering a few questions? I'm a harpooner by trade. Monsters interest me. All kinds. Keep away from him, you noisy sea lawyer. Just want to smell his breath? I can already smell yours. <laughs> Boil down for his oils, lad. There'll be free grog for all hands. <laughs> if you swallow it on top of it. You wait here. Yes, sir. Is it true about the sailing being canceled? Unfortunately, yes, Professor Aranax. The crew deserted this morning. But we just have to get to Saigon. Isn't there some other ship? Not a thing. I'm sorry. Next. Halfway around the world from Paris, and, and now this happens. There's nothing we can do about it. No. Except pack and unpack. That's all I've been doing now for a month. Oh, Professor. At any rate, San Francisco will have the honor of your company a while longer. I'm from the Bulletin. These gentlemen are from the Globe and the Post. Howdy, gentlemen. We're interested in your opinion of this monster. My opinion? Frankly, it's rather low at the moment. But actually, gentlemen, I don't know any more about it than you do. Oh, Professor, just a moment. Yes? Professor, what does the National Museum in Paris think about it? I cannot answer that. Professor, we heard this uh, expedition of yours was to gather facts about the monster. I'm afraid you were misinformed. My reasons for going to the Orient are purely scientific. If I ever get there. <laughs> Professor, doesn't the giant wall reach a length of 80 feet? Why don't you ask a fish? If we could go deep enough, we'd all be surprised at the creatures down there. Well, could such a creature destroy a ship or drag it under? Well, it might, if it were big enough. Don't you bring that. Please be careful, Professor. Well, gentlemen, I shall prepare a statement later. You do not deny, then, that such a monster could exist. Is that correct? I'm not denying anything. Are you sure? Hey, what are you drawing there? A oh, sketch of the monster. Thank you, Professor. Good Back day. Good day. Yes. Good day, sir. <laughs> now put the wings on it. Look what they've done to me. I made no such claims as these. Look at this drawing. I knew it. Living horrors of the deep were described today by Professor Aronnax of the Paris National Museum. Why, this is the most far-fetched nonsense yet. <laughs> far-fetched? I think the proportions are about right on the monster. Huh? 
You're not serious, Professor. Oh, I don't mean flying over the ship in its mouth. But the general size. You know, come to think of it, it is a rather interesting conception. Excuse me, Professor Aranax. Oh, no, no more reporters. You've done damage enough. Professor is very busy now. But I'm not a reporter. I represent the United States government. United States government? May I come in? Well, of course. Come in. Of course, sir. Uh, please do come in, Mr. Howard. Of course. Thank you. I'll be brief, Professor. I understand that your destination is the Orient and that you've been delayed. What would you say if we could get you there, but by a roundabout route, a cruise of three or four months through the South Seas? Would you accept? Well, uh, I would be interested, yes, naturally. Uh, sit down. Thank you. Uh, then I can see no reason why you and your apprentice shouldn't consider yourselves guests of the United States government until we can set you ashore at Saigon. Do you? May I ask, uh, why have you honored the professor this way? Well, I think the honor is ours. As the foremost authority on the sea and its mysteries, you can be an excellent observer. Your observations will greatly influence public opinion, and we can either confirm or deny certain rumors. I knew it. Concerns the monster. Is that true? Very much so. And according to the papers, you seem to believe the rumors, Professor. Oh, no, the Professor has been misquoted outrageously. Yes, I'm afraid I was misquoted. However, I have an open mind on the subject. All the better. Your reports would be unbiased. You see, other nations besides ours are forming expeditions, but I like to think ours has the advantage, if for no other reason, than you might consent to join us. Well, that's uh, very kind of you. Uh, we accept. Good. Now, Professor, if you don't mind, I'd like you to come downstairs and meet Captain Farragut. He's in command of the warship upon which you're sailing. And I might add that he has some rather strong ideas on the subject of sea monsters. You mean that his mind is not open? <laughs> Most emphatically not. Gentlemen, I believe my obligation to this legend has been dispatched. I offer these charts in evidence. They represent an accurate record of three and a half months cruising under steam in search of a sea monster. In my considered opinion, no such monster exists or ever did. Are you abandoning the search? There's no other choice, Professor. 
If we've gained nothing else, we can at least give the lie to those rumors and make the newspapers retract their exaggerations. It doesn't seem to me we have proved anything one way or the other, Captain. Well, I don't feel justified in wasting further time. My decision stands. We'll set you ashore in Saigon. Gentlemen. Cheer up, Professor. You'll forget all about fishing when you see the gals in Saigon. I thought they promised you a bonus if you harpoon this monster, Mr. Land. Ah, knowing full well, I couldn't collect it. When I get back, I'm shipping out on the first whaler it'll take me. I won't get rich, but I won't be sitting around picking my teeth with my harpoon. Maybe we are lucky. It might have sunk us. You scare me. <laughs> be a good loser, Professor. The fish that got away is always the biggest one. Ah, oh, what a pity, Professor. Hard over. Head for that ship. Boson's mate. Pipe all hands to rescue stations. Aye, aye, sir. All hands to rescue stations. I'm thinking she went down with all hands. Poor devil. Not a living soul left. What could have caused such a fearsome explosion? Black powder and worse, a whole shipload of the stuff. Yeah, what could have set it off, though? She must have struck something. Or could it be that something struck the ship? Huh? What do you mean, something struck her? You mean in the monster, ain't you, mate? Ah, oh, it might be the monster, all right. I think it is. The monster, I've seen more monsters in my Aunt Gussie's fishbowl than on this whole cruise. Sure, it's the monster, the monster. It is the monster. The monster thinks it's the monster. I'm down on deck. I must insist, Professor, that you keep these fish stories to yourself. On deck, floating object off the larboard quarter.
Search the boat. I You are from the warship that attacked me, are you not? Yes. We were under the impression that this was a monster, not a craft of human invention. This is Ned Land, Master Harpooner, my apprentice, Conseil, and I am Pierre Aronnax of the Paris National Museum. Professor Aronnax, I've heard of you and studied your writings. It is fortunate that your background differs slightly from that of your companions in crime. You may remain. Take the others on deck. Wait a minute. What do you want to do with us on deck? I did not invite you here. You came as an enemy to destroy me. But that is not true. They've done no harm. Look, don't blame us because the warship shelled you. I demand a fair trial. You've had your trial. The sea brought you. The sea shall have you back. Why, why, why just shove an easy face? But you cannot do this. This is not civilized. I'm not what is called a civilized man, Professor. I have done with society for reasons that seem good to me. Therefore, I do not obey its laws. But I am as guilty as they are. I will grant you to both of them and me too enlisted to track down what we thought to be a monster. But in that case, we are no more guilty than the rest of the world. I would consider that guilty enough. You have a great deal to learn, Professor. Your book is brilliant, but it lacks scope. You have carried your work as far as terrestrial science permits. The real story of the ocean depths begins where you left off. Wonders that defy my powers of description. The secrets that are mine alone, but which I would be willing to share with you. At the expense of my companions' lives? I'm sorry. You'd have to choose between them and me. Then I cannot accept. Professor, I regret your choice. Take him up. I'm secure for sea. Aye, sir. All stations ready? Prepare for diving. Yes, sir. All stations ready. Prepare for diving. Ahead slow. What's he up to, Professor? I don't know. Trim your forward ballast. Trim your forward ballast. Three degrees down. Three degrees down. Engine stop. Service and stand by.
pick up those two men in the water. Aye, sir. What about the other one? Take them all below and confine them to quarters. I found out what I wanted to know. Off you go. Off you go, Esme. Come in, gentlemen. Be seated, please. Thank you. Professor. You may serve them. Your clothes are being dried and will be returned to you shortly. In the meantime, avail yourselves of my humble hospitality. Humbly, Father. Well, you do right well for yourself, mate. You may call me Captain Nemo. I'd like to express our gratitude, Captain. We are grateful to be alive. I want none of your gratitude. You're all on the strictest probation. And I'd advise you not to attempt to escape. Do you understand your position? Well, I don't know, Captain. A prisoner has a right to escape, hasn't he? That is correct. Uh -huh. And a guest don't need to. I guess that makes us a little bit of both, huh? <laughs> Consider that a fortunate compromise, then, Mr. Land. I tolerate no guests aboard the Nautilus, and you already know the fate of prisoners. Food is delicious, isn't it, Professor? Oh, very good. Never tasted better. There's a fork on your left, Mr. Land, or aren't you accustomed to utensils? I'm indifferent to him. May I ask how you are able to set such a table as this, Captain? These dishes come entirely from my ocean kitchen. There is nothing here of the earth. How remarkable. This tastes like veal. The flavor deceives you. It is filet of sea snake. Huh? I suppose this is lamb, then. That is brisket of blowfish with sea squirt dressing, basted in barnacles. It's very good. In fact, it's better than lamb. Yes, my cook excels in preparing these various products. You're not finished, are you? Well, uh, just the main course. Uh, pasta cream, Mayor. Huh? The cream is, of course, milk from the giant sperm whale. And those delicious fruits you're eating are actually preserves made from sea cucumbers. Well, I'd never have guessed it. They are excellent. Eat your pudding, Mr. Land. I ain't sure it's pudding. What is it? It's my own recipe. Sauté of unborn octopus. <laughs> Nothing here is fit to eat. Sauté of unborn octopus. Since we are nearing the island of Crespo, you'll have an opportunity of selecting your own food. You mean we're getting off this submarine? For a brief hunting expedition. Well, that, that suits me fine. Me too. When do we start, mate, uh, Captain? Almost immediately. These two will join the expedition. Will you prepare them? Aye, sir. Accept one of these cigars, Professor. Thank you. Delightful smoke. Different somehow. Havana? Seaweed. Well, I cannot accuse you of not making us comfortable, Captain. In a way, though, I feel like a condemned man who has eaten his last dinner. And a very good one, too. Thank you. Uh, I am still curious as to the reason you spared our lives. In your case, I wanted to test your loyalty to your companions. I may have use for such misplaced devotion. Misplaced? It comforts me to know that your life was not too dear a price to pay for love of your fellow men. 
I'm afraid I don't understand. At the moment, I don't intend that you should. But I may have use for you. And until I make up my mind, you should find ample diversion here. You have literature, art treasures, my collections, and even music, if you so desire. We are almost at the island of Crespo. All this was once an island. Although it is now sunk, it is nonetheless fertile. We do our hunting and farming here. And the water? The sea supplies all my wants. Fine way to go hunting. I know there'd be a catch to this. Seems you can't do anything on this boat without getting wet. Hey, I feel like I'm keeping a fish out of work. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going with this? Hey, what are you going to do with that?
gold, silver, and diamonds. You're sent to get food, not treasure. You can't eat pieces of eight. Eat, I can eat any time. You place an absurd value on the cheapest of human commodities. Aboard the Nautilus, we use such baubles for ballast. Sure, lighten this ship. The greatest treasures of all, Mr. Land. Mine a sound mind and a full belly. Henceforth, when you're sent for food, don't stoop to pick up pennies. Now you've been picking them up. Been picking them up good. Ballast. Now you forget yourself. Don't try my patience, Mr. Land. Rather than watch your every move, I know a much easier solution to the problem. Crying wasted. Ned, the professor wants to see you. Yeah? Close the door, please. Don't think for a minute that was an empty threat he made. You are going to get us all killed if you keep on antagonizing him. Look at the trouble you got into wandering off that way. Why did you do it? Ask him. He went with me. Well, that was scientific interest. I, I had no idea he was after treasure. Oh, no. Stop it. You even help carry the chest out, you liar. We mustn't quarrel among ourselves. We must stay together. It's our only chance. Chance? For what? Oh, I know what you want, Professor. These crazy iron skillets turned your head. You want to play a waiting game hoping to learn old Nemo's secrets? Well, I believe you owe the world that much, Ned. Have you a better plan? Yeah. I want to get off. Of course, I don't mind going with my pockets full. I can't believe you could be so foolish. Why not? He's got a king's ransom aboard here. And don't call it stealing because that's the way he got it. If we could take this thing over, we'd be rich. I'd have a ship of my own, and you wouldn't have to be starving along at a professor's pay. Don't look at me with those soft boiled eggs. I caught the queen of gold in them when the chest busted. <laughs> Ned, listen to me. I want you to forget this idea and promise me that you won't start anything on your own. I won't promise that, Professor. But at least try my way first. I know I can win the captain's confidence, but I need time and I need your help. Can I count on you? All right. Well, I'll go this far. I won't try any one-man mutiny yet. It is the best way, believe me. Well, there's one thing you ought to know, Professor. Nemo's cracked. I've yet to see the day you can make a deal with a mad dog. While you're feeding him sugar, I'll be figuring a plan to muzzle him. Fool. He simply cannot grasp the significance of all this. Here we are within reach of the most fabulous discoveries of all time and the patterns of gold, escape, trivialities, nonsense. Well, that depends upon your point of view, Professor. What do you mean by that? I just think that Ned values his life above scientific achievement, that's all. His life means nothing. Nor does mine or yours compared to what's behind all this. We can't have him crossing Nemo.
As the voyage continued, the Nautilus and its motive power excited my utmost curiosity. At my host's invitation, I inspected the ship. He seemed determined to show me everything. We went to the very heart of the vessel, the propulsion unit. discovered what mankind has always sought, the veritable dynamic power of the universe.
They're getting up steam, sir. Very good. That ship that flies no flag sails with the tide. But the evil in its hold will never reach its destination. You have your orders. Aye, sir. Go to your station. Go below, Professor. You are going to sink that ship? I said go below. Stay in your quarters. Stand by engines. Half ahead. Collision speed. Full. Collision speed. Professor, are you all right? <laughs> all those men, they, they didn't even have a chance. They were sailors, same as me. Slaughtered by that monster you're trying to make friends with. They don't. I don't know how you feel, Professor, but I feel like a knife that's just stabbed a friend in the back. Go to your quarters. I've had a belly full. Damage report, sir. Rudder and starboard diving planes disabled. Must uh, a repair party. We make temporary repairs here. Aye, sir. I asked you to leave, Professor. You also asked me ashore to show me man's inhumanity to man. Why? 
to justify this. You are not only a murderer, you are a hypocrite. The proof lies out there. You call that murder? Well, I see murder too, not written on those drowned faces out there, but on the faces of dead thousands. There are the assassins, the dealers in death. I am the avenger. There's murder rights reserved for that hated nation. It has taken everything else from me, everything but my secret, the secret of my submarine boat and the energy that propels it. They tried. They cast me into prison, and when they failed, tortured my wife and young son to death. Do you know the meaning of love, Professor? I believe I do. What you fail to understand is the power of hate. It can fill the heart as surely as love can. Sorry for you. It's a bitter substitute. The, the explosions scattered everything all over the place. I was just trying to tidy up. Professor, I, I'd like to speak to you. About what? Well, I, I believe, I believe things have gone far enough. Murder means nothing to him. I, I think he enjoys it. You're sure of that, are you? Quite sure? Well, I, I can only judge him by, by what I observed. It is not your place to judge. You don't know anything about the captain. He's already said that he has use for me. But what's more important, the world has a use for him. And I must make him understand that. And when he does, I assure you that he will judge himself far more harshly than you ever can. Is that clear? Whatever you say, Captain. Now, please go out and leave me alone. What did you call me? Captain? Yes, I did. And I must say, there is a certain resemblance. Seen enough? I want to talk to you. You little spying hyena. Let the professor put you up to this. It's the professor I want to tell you about. You were right. Nemo is wanting over completely. I bet I was right. And I was right about you spying on me. Look, Ned, I, I've known all along that you were stealing food and treasure. I didn't tell her so. I was glad you did it. We may need it. We? Since when do I need you? We need each other. Huh. Ned, I, I want to be friends. I want to be friends. I want to escape. And so do I, with you. And we have to save the professor in spite of himself. You once said you had a plan. Have you? Yeah, I got a plan. Well? Trouble is, it won't work. I can't figure how they navigate this barge. Nothing's written down, no courses, no bearings, nothing. If we could only figure where we're heading, we'd have a chance. That's no problem. Hmm? When I was reading a professor's journal, I, I learned about Nemo's plans. We're heading for a place called Volcania. Volcania? Yeah, that's, that's Nemo's base. Well, why didn't you say so? This is what I've been waiting for. Why, sure. Okay. Well, I gotta take a look at those charts. Why not? Need all hands. You keep a watch. Aye, sir.
cigar. Hey, she likes them. You want another? Give me a kiss. <laughs> you have quite a way with animals, huh? I do better with women, and they don't eat cigars like this. Be quiet, you feed You feed them. All right, I'll give you a cigar, all right? You have one, you see? Me? I've got to do some research. I need some specimens. Get them. Specimens? What kind? The ones in bottles. Go on, beat it. And don't get caught. No. Well, Ned, you've got everything here, from the rarest new to branks to oysters. Oysters are out of season. Uh, dump them in the sink, all of them. I just want the bottles. But you can't do that. These are priceless. Hey, Ned, you're not thinking of putting messages into these bottles. Why, that went out with Robinson Crusoe. You've forgotten this is the 19th century. Something else I forgot. Oh. That's for spying on me. Don't let me catch a pad in the shadow of my stern again. Remember that. I don't like bashing anybody, but you had it coming, lad. And I thought we were friends. Sure we're friends. Go ahead, hit me. Hmm? Hit me. You mean that? Sure, go ahead, you can't miss it. Oh. <laughs> now we are friends. Oh, all right, shipmate. <laughs> well, now I'll tell you what I had in my mind. This may be old stuff, tossing messages off in bottles and setting them adrift, but I've heard of it working. Alcohol. Very few alcohol. Well, we'll just drain the polywogs out and save the grog. It's, it's priceless. Oh. Anyhow. Hey, hold this, lad. This chap I knew got shipwrecked in the Bahamas. Him and a lady passenger alone on an island. Well, they had plenty of time on their hands, so they began writing notes, putting them in old rum bottles, and setting them adrift. One of them got through, too, and they was rescued. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I swallowed it. But there was a flabellina oculina in there. Poor thing. She won't answer her helm, sir.
I stand full. What's happened now? You seem to have run aground. Hey, what's happened? An accident, Captain? An incident. Our faulty rudders put us on a reef. The tide will float us free by evening. Professor, we're off the coast of New Guinea. Would you like to go ashore? No, thank you. The last time we went ashore, it was a prelude to murder. Check for leaks. Aye, sir. Throwing away a chance like that. The professor's losing his ballast. Smell it sweet as an angel's kiss. Dry land, mate. Coconuts, mangoes, and native girls hungry for affection. I'd give anything to shake hands with a tree again. So would I. And so would the professor. I, I know how badly he wants to collect specimens, but he won't ask any favors from Nemo. What's wrong with you going instead? Nothing. What about you? Me? I'm a collecting fool. There's no harm in asking. No harm at all, mate. Captain, I, I wondered as long as the professor is not going ashore if I could go in his place. I, I'd like to collect some specimens and, and take some notes. You feel qualified? Qualified? Why, for years, the professor and I have been working together. And I can row, sir. Got a strong back. And a strong desire to escape. Who, me? I'm no deserter. Happy to be aboard, sir. Very well. Permission granted. Thank you, sir. But stay on the beach. The natives over there are cannibals. They eat liars with the same enthusiasm as they eat honest men. Break out the skiff. Aye, sir. Break out the skiff.
to the cannibals. Captain, Captain, scores of boats with Captain, cannibles. we're under attack. Naturally, since you invaded their privacy, they have every right to invade ours. They're coming aboard, Captain. Get me a harpoon, quick. Close the hatch! I'll give the commands on this boat, Mr. Lamb. Down the side. Aye, sir. charge of electricity, Mr. Land. Not very hospitable, but harmless. And speaking of hospitality, may I say that you have abused mine for the last time? Well, how's that? You've continuously disobeyed my orders. Who, me? I told you once the fate of prisoners. And since you insist on being treated as one, I have no choice but to oblige you. It... Take him in charge. Aye, sir. Now, wait a minute. What's this all about, You Captain? left the beach with the intention of escaping. The only reason you came back is because the natives forced you to. You're going to regret that choice, Mr. Land. Ship rounding the headland, sir. When we clear this reef, I'll see that you trouble my existence no longer. I should have taken my chances with the cannibals. A warship. A warship? Put him under guard below. Take him below. All engines, ready. You must break free of the reef. Aye, sir. Titan ship and trouble ballast. Get below! They'll be shelling us in a moment. Aye, sir. Astern, full. Starting ball it is, sir. Shutting the door. Wait! Wait! Let us out!
Much water in the power compartment. Five feet and rising, sir. Break out a spare shaft. Break out a spare shaft. Give us use leverage. Bring it towards ships. Put the aft end under the beam. And look at the hoist. Slack. Take a train. Professor, <coughs> the dials are not moving. <laughs> We've gone to deep. <laughs> Stand by with braces. Aye, sir. Is in place, sir. Man your stations. Start engines. Thinking. Fortunately, there are limits beyond which man and his puny efforts cannot survive. We exceeded them by 5,000 feet. <coughs> We're deeper now than man has ever been before.
man. You saved my life. Why? It's a good question. Well, there's only one thing a fella can do when he's made a mistake as big as this. What? Get drunk. I've tried them. Very good. <laughs> Mess them. <laughs> you know, Esmeralda, you're the only one on this barge who understands me. Give us a kiss. <laughs> Your whiskers tickle. Let me see your whiskers. What a shave, honey. You're beginning to look like Nemo. Let's try it again. Oh, come on, let's try it again. There was old man Nemo. Fed his crew on worms and fishes. Eels for breakfast. Slimy cold on seaweed dishes. When they ate it, they knew it wasn't beef. But eat they did with it's with a smelling like a reef. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not so loud, Ned. Not so loud. Hey, she loves those flabalinas, acalinas. <laughs> I'm happy you're out of jail, Ned. Yeah, I got the run of the ship. Big-hearted Nemo. You know, the professor's very happy, too, after all. It's the first time that Nemo has shown any gratitude. We don't want none of his gratitude. We don't want none of his gratitude. This is awful. You can tell him that for the both of us. Go ahead, Meralda, huh? Come on. I want to take a little nap here. here. You lie down there. Cover yourself up good. I don't want you to catch cold. This tells me you have taken my journal. May I ask why? I keep no log on the Nautilus, and I was uh, frankly curious to read your account of the giant squid, in particular my narrow escape and rescue. According to you, Mr. Land is a hero and the best tradition of cheap fiction. That can only be true if you consider your life chief, Captain. I might have expected you to say that. Actually, he regrets saving my life as much as I would regret saving his. The only difference is that I wouldn't have tried. Then it is that difference that gives Ned Land the human dignity you no longer possess. May I tell you something? You seem determined to. Go ahead. You protest too much. I know you were deeply touched by Ned's gesture, but you are ashamed to admit it. You cannot tolerate a fate in humanity, because if you do all this, the structure of your very existence, which you built on hate, and vengeance, all this will collapse around the naked lie of your life. You are a beaten man at war with the dictates of his heart. And you are a very gullible man, Professor. Gullible? Yes. You're too easily swayed by sentiment. Individual good deeds over bad, the crude extremes. You oversimplify matters. The world is more complex than that, and good must not be measured on a scale as small as Mr. Land brash heroics. What he would do one day, he would gladly undo the next. To be of benefit, goodness must be constant, forever building. It must have strength. I'm afraid what you seek is perfection. You will never find it. I have already found it. Here, 
is the world outside that is imperfect. If men and nations had this goodness that I speak of, I would be willing to share all this. My records, everything. Have you considered sharing it? That's the only reason that you're alive today, Professor. From the moment that you came aboard the Nautilus, I had hoped that you would be the key to a plan that I had in mind. I had intended using you as an emissary. But now I don't know. Is it that you don't trust me? No. But you are ever the optimist. Do you really believe they would lay down their arms and abolish their slave camps? Yes, I think I could persuade them. Let me try. We're nearing Parkenia. I want you to see the extent of these secrets for which they've haunted me. The knowledge which costs the lives of those dearest to me. The power which is still mine. Enough energy to lift mankind from the depths of hell into heaven. Or destroy it. Perhaps then you will feel less inclined to barter such a prize. We will discuss it at that time. We've raised the island, sir. Why have we stopped? There are warships ahead. Carrying what flag? No flags, sir. Very well. There's your answer, Professor. We've been ambushed by the very forces that you wish to trade with.
Stand by engines. Prepare for diving. Aye, sir. Prepare for diving. Shall I take over? Half ahead. Four degrees down. We understand, sir, and we're with you. Wait a minute, I don't understand. What's that got to do with us? I'm dying, and the Nautilus is dying with me. Professor. Yes? In a matter of minutes, an explosion, such as the world has never known, will destroy my island and all its works forever. That is why I have brought the Nautilus here to its last deep resting place. Here, at least, we will die in peace. Let every man go to his quarters and remain there. Why do you take us down with you? Lock them in their quarters. Aye, right, sir. Take them out. I don't want to die. Don't let them do it, Professor. Captain, you cannot do this. There is more at stake here than just our lives. Yours was a dream of the future come true. I beg you to reconsider. Power greater than mine makes that impossible. But there is hope for the future. 
When the world is ready for a new and better life, all this will someday come to pass. In God's good time. Don't give up, mates. We're no part of
had to wallop you, Professor. It wasn't time to stop for souvenirs. Perhaps you did mankind a service, Ned. Let's go. 